This is the afternoon edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Thursday, the 1st of March. I'm James Spann. Needless to say, a lot of questions as we are on the verge of a major severe weather event for parts of the eastern and southern U.S. We'll try and answer all of those questions here. So let's get in there and take a look. We'll start with some of the Skycam images, as we always do around the ABC 3340 Alpha Skycam Network, first off coming from Chihaw State Park in East Alabama. That's Alabama's highest mountain there, the elevation 2,407 feet at the peak of that mountain, and it's mostly cloudy, a few uh, peaks of sunshine. But on the western side of the state, the sun is shining in Tuscaloosa. That's looking east from the Tuscaloosa County Courthouse, and we'll go down south, and rain is falling down in Pike County. That's our Skycam on the campus of Troy University in the football stadium there. Here's the water vapor satellite imagery, and you can see our new trough carving out out west, and that will be moving east, impacting the nation with some pretty wild weather in uh, the next 36 to 48 hours. Now, today, we have a stall boundary uh, to, over across the central part of the state, and there's a huge contrast in weather on either side of that front. North of the boundary, it's mostly sunny over North Alabama, but south of the boundary, it's cloudy, and we've had some big storms down there today. In fact, check the radar a little after 2 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, showers and storms pretty active south of Interstate 85, east of Interstate 65. In fact, at that point, we had a severe thunderstorm warning for Houston County. And just before this, we had a tornado warning down there for parts of Geneva and Houston counties for areas south of Dothan. Uh, and as the front moves north, we could see a few showers around here tonight, early tomorrow, but nothing impressive, nothing severe. And yes, it is very mild. For the 1st of March, as expected, we're up in the 70s today. Uh, a lot of folks sitting at 74. Looks like uh, Gadsden might be the warm spot of all places. They've got 75 up in Etowah County. But around the nation, it's colder on the backside of the trough, and uh, that contrasting air mass setup will be one of the ingredients for some active weather over the next 48 hours. There's the watch warning map around the nation this afternoon. Uh, red flag warnings for the southern plains. That's because of windy and dry conditions. Uh, winter weather issues out west with that new trough. And a winter storm warning for parts of interior New England with the departing trough, the one that brought the storms in here yesterday and last night. Now, the guys at SPC will maintain the standard slight risk of severe weather tonight uh, from Memphis up to about Springfield, Missouri. And the main issue there would be hail. That's Those are elevated storms back behind the front. But this is the big deal. This is the convective outlook tomorrow. This is technically valid from 6 o'clock tomorrow morning until 6 o'clock Saturday morning. The standard risk, longtime viewers that watch these every day, you know it's a slight risk. And that runs all the way from uh, almost Baton Rouge, Louisiana to Cleveland, Erie, Pittsburgh, uh, and Grand Rapids. The enhanced risk is the moderate risk. And uh, that is running from north and west Alabama and northeast Mississippi up through Tennessee, Kentucky, and to Indiana and Ohio. Some of the cities involved in that would be Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, Muscle Shoals, Huntsville, Nashville, Tupelo, Louisville, Lexington, and Cincinnati. And uh, again, that's a big number right there. Uh, that's pretty rare. A 45% chance of severe weather within 25 miles of a given point. Uh, in that moderate risk area. That's, that's saying like a 50-50 chance of having large hail, damaging winds, or a tornado near your house. So, uh, again, that's very elevated, and, of course, we'll watch that. And uh, There's a chance these guys at SPC might uh, upgrade maybe the northern end of that thing up to a high risk, as you'll see. We'll talk about the specifics. And then on uh, Saturday, the uh, severe weather chances drop off just 5% to the east on the South Atlantic coast. This is the rain for the next five days, valid through Tuesday morning of next week. And uh, the bullseye here sitting about two inches at Birmingham. So in addition to having the threat of uh, severe weather, we'll have some heavy rain with this thing uh, tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night. All right, let's drill deep, get into this. This is the uh, modeling. This is the global forecast system. The 12Z run valid at noon tomorrow, noon on Friday. You can see the trough out west. We'll go down below that. The surface low is 996 millibars. Uh, this run a little deeper with that low. And again, we're clearly in the warm sector. Uh, we'll go to midnight tomorrow night. The surface low is down to 984 millibars near Windsor, Ontario, with a trailing front down to about Muscle Shoals. And again, by Saturday midday, that stuff's out of here. But let's look at the uh, high-resolution RPM, the Rapid Precision Mesoscale Model. This is 10 o'clock tonight. And again, with the moisture moving north, we could see a few showers tonight. Uh, but again, nothing severe. Midday tomorrow, and uh, this is kind of when the window starts to open up. We should begin to see some convection firing over North Alabama. 
Uh, we'll go to 6 o'clock tomorrow evening. Any of that stuff right there could be severe. Uh, go to midnight tomorrow night. Everything rolls into a pretty nasty-looking squall line approaching Birmingham. And then this is Saturday morning at 6 o'clock, and all of a sudden this run is slower. I'm telling you that every run is different on ending the rain here. Uh, but I'd say the rain will be ending between 6 and 9 a.m. Saturday. I know some people are trying to plan Saturday morning events. That's not very helpful, but let's take a look at it tomorrow. Uh, but clearly by Saturday morning, all the severe weather is east and south of here. And then noon on Saturday, the showers are, are to the south with the heavier storms down in northern Florida. Okay, these are the uh, severe weather parameters. We'll take a look at these. Uh, this is 6 o'clock tomorrow evening. This is the surface base cape or the buoyancy of the air. This is the ease of the air parcels to rise, and those numbers are pretty high. Uh, the instabilities are peaking almost at 2,000 joules over Kentucky. We'll go to midnight tomorrow night. Instabilities are about 1,300 over West Alabama. And again, that's very sufficient for severe weather in early March. Uh, this is midnight tomorrow night. The helicity, this is the veering of the wind with altitude in relation to storm motion. Now, the higher numbers are north of here, but clearly uh, what you see there, it could support rotating updrafts, uh, clearly supporting tor tornado potential, especially in the initialization of the storms. And this is the energy helicity index, the EHI, tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock. And I think if the SPC guys go high risk, they're going to do it where you see the enhanced EHIs over Tennessee and Kentucky. Uh, that just seems to be where the, the greatest combination of shear and instability will be. Now, please don't let me think that lessens the threat down to North Alabama. There's certainly a severe weather threat here. But again, if they're going to go high, they might look at that area north of here. And we'll check the, uh, uh, first off, the uh, significant tornado parameter, the STP. This is valid at 9 o'clock tomorrow night. Numbers approaching 3. Anything over 1 is significant. Uh, the higher numbers, though, are way up north over Ohio, where the better shear will be. But again, I, I stress that is clearly supportive of uh, tornadoes and maybe a significant tornado, a strong, violent one. And look at the Craven-Brooks index. This is one of our favorite uh, indices put together by Jeff Craven and Harold Brooks two friends, and, and uh, let me tell you what, those numbers are very high. So no change in our thinking. We think tomorrow afternoon the convection breaks out. Storms initially could be by themselves, and those could go severe with potential for isolated tornadoes. I'd say the main tornado threat would be noon until maybe 8 or 9 o'clock, and then after 9 o'clock late tomorrow night, the thing rolls into a squall line. The main issue, damaging straight-line winds. Higher probabilities of severe weather north of U.S. 80, and the really high probabilities are north of Interstate 20. But again, everybody in Alabama could clearly see severe weather, especially the northern half of the state. So, you know, the advice be near a good source of weather information. Come on, if you're watching this, you will be. But you need to tell your friends that don't pay attention to weather about this. All right, Saturday, this is the GFS noon. It's got the uh, uh, activity pushing out of here. So, again, the, the rain ending, you know, I'd say 6 to 9 a.m. Saturday morning. We turn cooler. Uh, not so sure we get out of the 50s on Saturday. Could be kind of a cool, breezy day. Uh, Sunday, and again, those thickness values are coming way down on this chart. This is suggesting on Sunday we won't get out of the 50s uh, with a cool breeze. Monday of next week, we're dry. We start to warm up. Highs in the 60s. There's Tuesday. Wednesday. Next week looks pretty calm. It's so a 140 high, kind of nosing in here from the east. Uh, highs that hold in the 60s. There's Thursday, week from today. And even uh, the week from tomorrow still looks dry. So next week, nice and calm after this uh, significant severe weather threat. Let's check the end of the forecast on the 17th of March. St. Patrick's Day, I think. That is St. Patty's Day, isn't it? Uh, big trough uh, axis uh, just north of here with a cold front coming in. Some colder air behind that. But again, no evidence of any major late season long-lasting cold snaps or winter weather mischief on the uh, run here. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog. The next video here by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. And if you're around here, watch us on television. Even if you're not around here, watch the live stream on the web, ABC 3340 News at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless. The first thing you've got to understand, you cannot rely on an outdoor siren you cannot hear those inside a home, a building, a church. It won't work. You've got to get something inside your house. That's a weather radio or maybe a smartphone app. We work with a 
company that's developed a wonderful weather radio app for Android phones and iPhones. It knows where you are, and if you're in a tornado warning polygon, you get the warning. And if you're not, you don't. It's an effective device, and it's a great way to be sure you get the warning.